is Rusty Walker with Learning Center again. Today what we're going to do is we're going to change out a coalescent filter on the Tempride oil separator. And helping me today is going to be Joe Wilkerson. Hey Joe, how you doing buddy? Good, All right, so Joe and I are going to go ahead and change the separator. We'll show you different processes and procedures. Remember, the oil separator has to be changed yearly on our PMs, our, our yearly PMs, so that we don't build up too much pressure drop across the separators and end up blowing the separator and dumping the entire discharge pressure out. So Joe, you ready to get started? Sure. All right, let's go. Now that we've turned off all the compressors, the next thing we want to do is we want to make sure we isolate the discharge on all the compressors so that we trap the gas on the inlet side of the separator. Then after we isolate all the compressors, we want to go ahead and close the discharge valve on the outlet of the separator. Go ahead and isolate all your oil feeds from the reservoir in a continuing effort to isolate the discharge oil separator. After isolating the compressors and the oil feed, go ahead and close the hot gas dump line and then reach over and close the main discharge line going to the condenser. That is the outlet to the oil separator. Now in order to get all the refrigerant out, go ahead and hook a, put a Schrader fitting on here with a MPT to Schrader fitting. Once you do that, put a 100 foot hose on that shader and then vent it outside so not to put CO2 in, into the space, then slowly open that open the valve to allow the CO2 to vent out of the oil separator. Now that we have the rack shut off, we've already isolated all the discharge, line, the discharge valves on all the compressors. We've shut off the main discharge valve on the outlet of the separator. Then we've gone and we've vented all the vapor and pressure off of the discharge line. We can now begin to take the top off the Tempride oil separator. All right, now that we've visually inspected the lid and made sure the, o -ring, the old ring o ring is still intact, Remember, we'll, we'll replace the O-ring. Anytime we change the filter, we always have to change the O-ring on the top. Now, go ahead and take a, five, six, a 7 16 open end wrench, loosen the feet off the spider bracket. Once you get the feet off of the, spir the spider, rotate the spider bracket. Notice, instead of a nut like you'd normally see on a Tempride oil separator, now we have this bracket that's specifically designed to hold the um, filter in place and hold it out in center of the separator. Now take the spider bracket out. Now we're going to go ahead and reach in and take the coalescent filter out. You may need to use a brazing rod hooked at one end to be able to grab hold of the separator the filter and bring it out. Now upon bringing it out, you want to look at the, the cleanliness of it and then also look at the bottom to see if the O-ring is on the bottom. If the O-ring is not in place, then you will want to look inside the separator and see if the O-ring is in there. If the O-ring is in there, it is important that you take that O-ring out. We can't put two O-rings in there, so replace that O-ring. We're going to take that because there will be a new O-ring on the new separator filter that we're going to put into the system. So once that's removed, we take our box of filter from Temprite. We're going to pull this filter out. Notice that on the bottom of the filter, a new O-ring is there. We want to make sure that that O-ring goes in the bottom, that it stays intact. Also in the package, you'll see a brand new O-ring that goes on the top of the separator so that we can change the old one. Never, never put a separator back together with the old O-ring because it'll end up blowing out and the entire charge will be dumped. All right, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and begin the process of putting that separator in. We've taken it out of the plastic bag. We've put the O-ring, we have the O-ring in there. We've inspected the O-ring. Now go ahead and put the filter back into the separator. All right, now that we have it in place, we're going to take our spider bracket, thread it back onto the rod. Instead of the nut, we use the spider bracket. We thread that back on until it's tight. Then once we do that, we'll take the 716 bolts out, 
thread them back out so that they make contact with the wall of the separator. Then once they make contact, we want to go a quarter turn past snug and that should be plenty to hold that separator and that separator filter in place with the spider bracket. Now, once you have the filter in place with the spider bracket, take the lid with the new O-ring. Remember, always change the O-ring. Go ahead and put it back into place. Thread the bolts back. One thing to make sure that that O-ring never gets used is once you pull any kind of old O-ring out of a system, it is always a good practice to cut that O-ring in half to make sure that it never gets used again inside the system. All right, so as Joe goes ahead and tightens all the bolts out, what now once he's done that, we'll go ahead and we'll pull a quick little vacuum on that, the separator and a little bit of discharge line. Uh, we're just trying to boil out the moisture. We don't want any moisture in the system. Uh, no refrigeration system likes to have moisture or non-condensables inside of it. So let's pull a quick little vacuum. Then once we have that vacuum pulled, we don't really have to be concerned with triple point because we are on the high, po high side of the system. Or as Joe's tightening these down, we'll get ready to um, open the system up. Now, as you tighten those down, Per temp right specs on the box, you may want to get them all tight and snug, and then you want to tighten them down to 50 foot pounds on your torque wrench. So remember, when you use a torque wrench, always tighten them in a star pattern, and it's tightened to 50 foot pounds. Hey, Joe, I appreciate the help changing that coalescent oil filter. Today you saw a video on how to properly change an oil coalescent filter. Remember, those filters have to be changed once a year to prevent pressure drop. Well, this is Rusty Walker for the Learning Center, and thanks for watching our video.